Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coastlands Community Church. We are glad you guys are here with us. Feel some energy here this morning. Hi, kids. You guys going to dance today? All right, if you guys are outside, go ahead and make your way on in. We're going to start to worship the Lord this morning. Sing about His goodness and His mercy and His grace. Happy, thank you. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there and to the big father up there. Happy Father's Day. Why don't you guys stand with us? We'll start with a prayer and then we're going to do some worship. Lord, Abba Father, we thank you. Thank you so much that you made that ultimate sacrifice as a father. You gave up your son. I can't even imagine that, Lord, but you did it for us, for all of us who weren't even born yet, but you knew us, you knew our names, you knew the sins we would commit, and you did it anyway. And I can't even imagine that love, Lord. We thank you for that this morning. Thank you that you made a way that we could come be with you someday, Lord. We just ask for your blessing today on this service, on our fellowship. Just let it be awesome and fulfilling today, Lord. Bless the pastor's words. Let us learn something new. Just bless us as well, Lord, on this beautiful Sunday morning. Awaken us with your love and your joy today, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
worship you today. We worship you with our lives. Lord, we worship you with our hearts. We know you don't want our money and you don't want our stuff. You just want our, our hearts and our minds, Lord. So we give that to you this morning because there is no one like you, God.
when we think about father, for some of us, that connotation is a, is a good thought. For some of it, it, it's maybe an abusive thought or a neglectful thought or an absent thought or variety of things that that word brings up in our emotions. I, uh, I asked my son if I, could, if I could share this and he said I could. Remember the day in the kitchen when he walked up to me and he said, Dad, you're not my real father. Now, just for the record, this was not one of my uh, adopted children. Uh, and I kind of, you know, took the shake and I was like, please say more. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're mine. And he said, uh, My heavenly father is my real father. And you're just the earthly representation. Of what the perfect father should be. You know, whatever father represents to you. Sing this song, and it's you're perfect in all of your ways. There's there's times when I have to repent. I'm imperfect. I try my best, but I don't get it right, and I don't think there are many dads that do. I don't think there's many of your dads that did either. we come this morning and we just we celebrate the ultimate Father's Day if you will the perfect representation from a perfect God who gave us a perfect example of how to be a dad how to be a father I'm not there yet, but I'm sure looking in the right direction. Lord, Father, would you not only reveal yourself to us as the perfect representation of that word, But would you heal us today? Lord, would you heal father wounds that are across this this place? Would you heal father wounds of those who are watching online? Would you would you heal? (laughs) Would you heal our land? of the father wound people that are looking for the love of the father in all kinds of things that are not ever going to satisfy would you do a healing that is deep your word says in Malachi that you're going to turn the hearts of the children to their parents you're going to restore the father heart to those that will seek you and find you. God, would you do this? With your heads bowed, no one looking around. If you need a healing, maybe it's a father healing, maybe it's a healing in your physical body, maybe your 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 body, your mind have been racked with something I, I I know that several of you that are watching online right now I've gotten the prayer request this morning we speak healing and life in the name of Jesus would you just would you just raise your hand if you need a healing in some way physically spiritually emotionally fathering whatever that you want a healing Lord would you minister right now in the in the power of your healing touch father would you touch your children with healing touches right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus 
the representation of the Son with us, Emmanuel, God the Father, with us, healing us from every infirmity. God, would you do what you do today? In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we're going to sing this chorus just one more time, and I want you to just receive your healing, receive your wholeness in the name of Jesus. cookies again this year, don't we? We do, yeah. Yep. I got my bag of cookies that uh, that you guys are going to get, and immediately, guess who wanted to sample the cookies? Well, of course I did, but my kids did too, so I want to invite the Shram family to come, and Brady, the all-star pitcher, Skyler, you know my kids are going to be really, really sad. Tara and Jason, we have been so blessed. I cannot believe that a year has gone like that. The day that the Millers moved to California was your, actually the week after was your first week here. And uh, it's been amazing. Thank you for serving in kids church and in worship uh just a great 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 gift to our family and we don't say goodbye we say so long and i heard that there's an open invitation to your house not before monday because the movers came friday and their stuff is arriving in dc on monday and jason is uh have you been promoted yet to colonel Colonel, and he will be serving at the Pentagon. And this is the word of the Lord. 
and I told him this over coffee, that God is going to open up opportunities for his voice to change nations as he sits at the table of influence and he may never be able to talk about what it is that happened as a result of the word of the Lord. He might not be standing up saying, hey, this is a great testimony because it'll be classified and then he'd have to kill everybody afterwards. But here's the thing. God places us when we are faithful with the little. Complete it for me, okay? What's the, what's the, what's the rest of that scripture when we're faithful with the little? We are faithful with the much. He will give us much. And so I want to send them forth with that blessing. So would you stretch your hands forth? Did you want to say anything, Pastor Shea? We love you guys. No, you can't. <laughs> and, you know, there are times when God truly just brings these unexpected blessings into our lives. And your family was just an amazing blessing. And can't thank you enough for all that you did. But here's a little something so that during your two weeks off, you can have a little bit of fun with your family. We love each of you. Brady, Skylar, Tara, Jason. Um, there are no words. But thank you. And I feel like, and I said this in your card, but as you leave, that you would hear the Father's words. Well done, good and faithful servants. Yep. Would you, uh, Shay, would you just pray over them and stretch your hands forth toward them as we send them out? Father God, I just, I thank you for this family. I thank you for the gift that they are. And I thank you, Lord, I believe for the gift that we got to be for them as well. And Father, as they leave this place, that your blessing would be upon them in a powerful way. That you would show them the next opportunity, Father God, that you would give them to minister, to find a church home. Lord, that they would be able to know it immediately, Father God, a place where their gifts, talents, and abilities can be used. A place that will be a blessing right back to them. Lord, fill them up to overflowing. And Lord, we just uh, speak nothing but goodness over this family and over their lives. Lord, we're excited. It's a happy, sad moment, but it's far more happy than it is sad. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job preaching yesterday. Johnny, where is Johnny? There he is. He's the man. We get to honor some more people. All right. Well, as you guys know, this is a season where school is finishing out. So I want to be real, real quick with this. If you just finished kindergarten, will you put your hand really, really high in the air? Kindergarten. Congratulations, you guys. If you just finished up your elementary school year, so you just finished fifth grade and you're off to middle school, whoo, we want to pray over you. Stand up. Put your hand in the air. All right. Congratulations. All right, and my high school seniors, I know you're in the crowd. Come on forward. Sierra, Bree, Matthew, I don't see. Can I have a representative for Matthew to come forward? Xavier, there he is. Sierra sick? All right. All right, we've got a few seniors this year that have graduated. In Xavier's case, we were just celebrating thoroughly. Now, <laughs> all right. Now we want to thank. Listen, we want to celebrate you guys today. We want to thank the Lord that He's blessed you, that He's carried you this far, and most of all, just like with the Shram family, this isn't the end. We're just beginning. We're sending you guys out to this next season in your life. Pray that God will bless you and the church. We wanted to give you something. This is from Matthew. And I just want to pray over you guys um, and let you know that your Coastlands family is here for you as, you've, uh, if you as you transition out of the youth group in many cases and you transition into your new positions. And uh, the young adults in the, in, the, in the church, we just want to pray that, uh, that you'll be blessed. So 
Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for these seniors. We thank you, Lord, for the work that you've done in their lives, Lord, that you've carried them this far, Lord. We pray that this is only the beginning, that as they launch out into uh, this next season in their life, as they become adults, Lord, that you will take them to great things, that you have a great plan for each and every one of them. Uh, that's not a mistake, that's not just something that you fumbled upon, but you planned it long before they were even created, before they were even formed, Lord. You knew them, and you had a plan for them, Lord. So as their family, we lift them up. We're here to support them in whatever they do and whatever they need as they go forward. And we just pray blessings over their lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 We love you. And, and you're, get, you're getting to, uh, I want to I say this, because uh, Johnny won't say this, but he and Kristen are going to be doing the kids' ministry at camp. And so pray, pray, pray for them, because they will have influence over many children, just as they've had influence over many children here. And so we want, uh, it's not quite yet, we'll pray for you as you, as you go the week before, but uh, as we receive our morning tithes and offerings and the kids go out, would you pray over our kids? And if you want to make a donation to send a kid to kids camp, how much is it? 250. 250. And it is an investment. Remember, we don't have money to spend, but we have money to invest in the future of our kids for Jesus. Tammy Donahue was telling us at convention about how many kids are baptized in the Holy Spirit at yeah. camp, called into ministry at camp, have salvation at camp. That's right. It's huge. So pray over our kids, Johnny. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the kids of Coastlands. We pray that you'll bless them as they go out and as you speak to them, Lord. We pray that they will know, first and foremost, your love for them, Lord. And uh, bless the leaders that are with them. Pray that uh, all will go well, that they'll have a great time, Lord. And as we celebrate fathers today, that they will know your love as their father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody else, stand up. And we're going to bring our offerings to the front. Those, those of you that are giving online, don't forget, you can text to give now. Uh, the information's in your bulletin. May the Lord bless the gift and the giver alike. Amen.
right. God is good, right? All the time? Oh, come on. Let's try that again. God is good? All the time? Amen and amen. All right. Well, I have a couple of announcements that I want to share with everyone. Everyone say, serve the city. Starts tomorrow. All right. So I just want to remind everyone to come out and be a part of that. If you have yet to sign up, there is something for everyone to do. Please see Judy. Please see Marty or Susan. And they will help your hands have something to do. Um, This is a wonderful opportunity. And it isn't just about the doing. It's also about the being. And it's one of those things that um, we hold in tension here at Coastlands Community Church. Being and doing. And our doing is supposed to flow out of our being. Do I hear an amen? It really is. And so as we go to Harbor North to do, that we have... The Spirit of God inside of us that is there to minister, to love, to build relationship, to have conversation with, and it is really just wonderful and exciting. So we're really thrilled about that. Um, Also remember that on Tuesday and Thursday, Serve the City is going to be open up in the evenings from 5 to 8 p.m. So for those of you who have to work during the day, there is still opportunity to be able to come out and serve that way. Um, We had our summer barbecue that kicked off our intentional connections last Sunday. We had 65 people who participated in our summer. Yeah, give the Lord a praise offering. You know what? Those were intentional connections. So thank you for everyone who hosted. July 14th, we're going to be having a game night at different people's houses. So if you're a game person and you like to play games, or even if you don't, you just want to come for the food and watch other people play games, there's going to be more information coming about that. But mark your calendars for July 14th. Um, The last thing that I have to share, Durant mentioned this briefly, um, but is camp that is coming up. Please, 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 this is a wonderful opportunity to invest. And I want to thank those of you who have given to this. But I would love to see every student and every child who wants to go to camp have that opportunity. If you agree, say amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. So I called my father this morning for Father's Day and I sent him a card And I don't think of my dad as being like this super sentimental kind of guy. And so one year I decided that I was going to just not send a card and I was going to just call. And my dad said, hey, I noticed that you didn't send a card. And I was like, is this the guy that normally hugs like this? There was this sentimental part inside that was starting to show on the surface. So I made sure that this year I sent my card early so that when I got the call, he said, I got your card. Thank you. He's, he's, he's watching this as well. And then he said, so were there any miracles that happened from your last week's sermon? I was like, "Um, I'm sure there were, Dad. Scott, bring the baby. Come on up here. So, Dad, this one's for you. Scott came to me before church and said, well, I'll let him tell you. First off, what an awesome God we, speak, we serve, and he has a great sense of humor. So yesterday, I'm leaving the um, dance recital from Norfolk State University, and I'm sitting at light. My windows are down. I got the music blaring, a great Christian song. Couldn't tell you what it was. And all of a sudden, this guy comes up, grabs my door, and says, Hey, you going downtown? I looked at him. I said, Okay, I'll give you a ride downtown. We get... Literally, a block down the street, and he, go, he looks at me and he goes, Are you a Christian? And I said, I love me some Jesus, brother. So, within two blocks, God's honest truth, he's telling me, this is just after finishing 
the Concord series, he's telling me, dude, I'm struggling with pornography. And I said, man, have you got the right ride this morning? So with the, you know, we jump up on the interstate and guess what? The Berkeley Bridge is open. So I got 20 minutes with this guy. So he was telling me he went into probably more information than I need, but I had my little pocket New Testament there, shared some scriptures with him, and we prayed, and I dropped him off. But it's just God's time and just being willing, at, you know, to jump in and go for the ride. You know, I, I, I appreciate you sharing this, Scott, because here's the thing. When our – are you going to be a preacher too, Ellie? I say, yeah. When, when our one day – and every day intersect, like we talked about last week. We don't know when God is going to have us in the moment where we need to bring the power of God, the word of the Lord, and sometimes he just jump in your truck with you. That's right. And to add on to that, we pray Tuesday morning for people who do not have somebody covering them in prayer. I got Chris's name. So Chris will be lifted up in prayer. Who knows what God's going to do in this man's life? Amen. Let's give the Lord a thank offering. Can you take that with you? That's fine. <laughs> so, Dad, there's a story for you. I, I want to just say that this father journey that I've been on for the last 15 years or so, has been an amazing journey. Now, has it all been easy? <laughs> I would be lying to you if I told you it has all been easy. It's tough being a dad. It's difficult facing some of the things that you have to navigate as a dad. I wish your husband was in here because uh, Brian was one of those guys that I would call. I, I had never parented daughters. Matter of fact, other than my wife and my mother, women still had cooties for me. And I was like 35. And I was like, I don't know what to do with them. And now I had three girls that I knew that I needed to be a good representation of their Heavenly Father, and I was completely and totally clueless, and so I phoned a friend, and I remember Brian sitting up in my office on the couch, and I'm like, Brian, I need to ask you, like, all kinds of questions, and some of these might be really stupid, but I trust you enough that you're not going to make me feel bad, and I just, boo. And he so graciously walked me through that part of fatherhood. And I'd call him back and I'd say, oh, what about this? What about that? Until I finally got my wits about me and I was able to be like, okay, me and Jesus can handle this. How many of you have ever had those days and weeks and years like, me and Jesus, we can do this thing called fatherhood. You know, the world uh, has a lot of different philosophies and some of them about fatherhood are 90% of fathering is just showing up that's one philosophy another one is parenting like you're the you're the friend of your child versus the father but i want to propose to you today that there is another way of being a father and it's called prophetic not pathetic prophetic fatherhood i love the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 3. And we're going to start here because Paul talks about the ministry of prophecy. And then we're going to go to 1 Thessalonians and look at how he uses fatherhood as an image to talk about how we make mature disciples. And so we're going to start here in 1 Corinthians 14, 3. But the one who prophesies speaks to people... For their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Strengthening being the constructive criticism of building up. Now, sometimes we get into the, the prophetic mode where we will say, well, I'm just going to prophesy to you the truth. And it's all about tearing people down and making them feel like this big. That's not what we're talking about. It's talking about speaking the truth 
but with the purpose of building it up. We, we tear down in order to build up, not tear down in order to make ourselves somehow feel better or give ourselves an excuse for what we didn't do well as a father. I'm, I'm learning a lot about myself as I'm, as I'm a father, and I'm learning that I am not as healthy as I would like to think that I am. Anybody else ever been there? Like, like parenting just shows you the rawness of life. Strengthening, encouraging, or that ministry of the paraclete, Holy Spirit, comes alongside of us and walks us forward, urges us forward. Some of you know this as the kick in the pants. It's the, let me put a foot where it needs to go in order to motivate you to where you need to go. Now, if that's the only thing that we're doing to help our kids move on to maturity, probably not the best thing. And here's one that I really struggle with, comforting. You know, I was was following a, a truck the other day, and on the back it just said, Suck it up, buttercup! Couldn't help but think of one of our very beloved... Um, servants here that often uses the term just suck it up buttercup I thought lovingly of that person and realized that that's exactly the mindset that I have hey okay you fell down it's a scratch come on you're not losing your limb just get up suck it up let's go my wife continues to remind me that there is such a thing as comforting my child in the midst of of their pain. Pain is a very real thing. So this is the ministry of the prophetic that Paul talks about. Now he's not talking about this in light of fathering, but what does it look like to be a prophetic father? Prophetic father. Let's say this word together, these words together. Speak Life. Go ahead and say it. Speak life. Say it until you believe it. Speak life. Again, speak life. If there's one thing that you walk out of here today, I want you to think of these words, speak life, as it relates to prophetic fatherhood. Now, you say, well, I'm a woman. I'm not a... The ministry of prophecy is for male or female. Okay, this, this is no respecter of persons. So, dads, I'm speaking to you because I am a dad. I can relate to some of these things now, and I can speak on dad terms. But, ladies, speak life. Let me hear just the ladies say it. Ooh, that has a sweet sound to it. Say it again so I can just hear it. Okay, guys, I want you to say it. Wow, isn't that neat how you have the you have the, the two tones there? It's pretty cool. Paul talks about this idea of speaking prophetic life in 1 Thessalonians. This is our text for this morning. And I want to read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I want to read 11 through 13. I'm going to stop on a couple of these words as I'm reading them. He says, for you know, let me stop there. The word know in the Greek is a word that means I'm going to use an analogy that is going to help you to see where you should go by observing something that already is and that you're familiar with. You know what Jesus did? What it, when Jesus told a story, what did we call those? We call them parables. It's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. He took whatever was around him. He took that truth that we understood, and then he connected heaven to it. So what Paul's saying here is, for you know, essentially, so I'm going to give you this analogy, and you're going to connect heaven with something that you are experiencing here on earth. That we dealt with each of you, as a father. The idea that this is a very individual connection that each 
person needs to understand. He's not talking to the Thessalonians as a group. He's writing a letter that says, I'm speaking to you. 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 Are you getting the point? Each of you. So you can't say that what we're going to talk about here is for, oh, well, that's for the dads in the room. That's for the other people in the room. That's for the people that had a good dad. That's for the people that understand heaven. Each of you are to deal in this, in this way. And he says that there are three things that we're to deal with. And the words are encouraging, comforting, and urging. We'll get to those in a minute. But he's usually he's using this familial analogy all through First uh, Thessalonians chapter two. In the beginning, he says brothers and sisters three times. In this passage, he says brothers and sisters. Now I don't know if you have brothers and brothers or sisters, but we have brothers and sisters that squabble from time to time. Matter of fact, we just. We bought a car that has captain's chairs in the second row, thinking there's an armrest, two armrests in between. It's going to separate them. Those of you that are laughing are saying, how's that working for you? (laughs) There is no chasm in between that seems to eliminate squabbling. I just, I mean, other than like a wall or what, I don't know. Just build a wall. But that brother and sister analogy is evident. Then he says to, he uses the analogy of a woman, a nursing mother. He's talking about something that the ladies are going to understand. And the men are going to have a little tiny bit of a clue as their wives download upon them of what it's like to be attached to this little thing that sucks the life out of them literally. And then he says, okay, dads, I want you to get this because if you understand this principle, you're going to speak life over not only your kids, but you're going to speak life over people, disciples that are going to come to full maturity. How many of you, how many of you want your kids to live as sucklings in your house for the rest of your life? Please don't raise your hand, even if lie to me right now, okay? Because that is very unhealthy if that's what you're thinking. I'll just put it out there. Most parents want their kids to grow up and be even more successful than they were, right? That's the heart of a parent. And so what do we do? We help them to learn from our mistakes. Uh Uh-oh. We'll get to God's redeemed story over the next couple of weeks and how we leverage that for the kingdom of heaven. But I was sitting this morning with Gavin at the breakfast table, and this is a man after my own heart, I'm telling you. You know when you say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree? This kid loves peanut butter almost as much as I do. I have peanut butter coffee. I have peanut butter snacks. I mean, my it's like... Peanut butter. If it is, if it says peanut butter, I don't care what it is. It could have like peanut butter and anchovies. I'm fine as long as it says peanut butter in it. So he comes to me this morning with a huge bowl of cornflakes. Now I don't like cornflakes. I think they're the most boring cereal ever. As does my son. And he poured a big bowl of cornflakes and he said, "Dad, cornflakes are kind of boring." I didn't. I didn't school him in this. Cornflakes are kind of boring. But you know what really spices them up? A half a container of peanut butter. And I mean, literally, there was half a container of peanut butter on top of his cornflakes this morning. It looked like it was whipped cream, only it was peanut butter. And he's got this bowl, and he's got a spoon. He's like, Dad, this makes cornflakes awesome. Now, when he got done with the cornflakes... There was like this nasty goo of peanut butter on a spoon. And the second time he came up to me, he said, Dad, I, th- I, th- I think I've had enough. Do you want the rest of it? <laughs> like, no, you can give that one to the dog. That's fine. Just like, you know, the dog will love the peanut butter. 
but the apple or the peanut butter doesn't fall far from the tree. He, he's becoming like me in the things that I like. Now, that's a good thing, you know, with peanut butter. There's a couple other things that I'm not so sure that I want multiplied in him. My wife regularly tells me, that's your son, okay? That behavior right there is you. Lord, please forgive me. Somehow I have multiplied what I didn't exactly want to multiply. Prophetically, as we raise our kids up, as we raise people up to maturity, we want to do it well. And Paul looks at these three things here in First Corinth or in uh, First Thessalonians. He says, encouraging. Everybody say encouraging. encouraging. Comforting. Say encourage or say comforting. comforting. And urging. Say that word. You to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it actually is the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. Wouldn't it be great if our kids heard everything from us that was the word of God? I, I, I almost said, wouldn't it be great if our kids heard everything from us as the word of God? And that was the wrong thing because there's sometimes that we'll say some things and if they received it as the word of God, guess what? The imperfect father, this imperfect earthly father gets in the way and messes it up. But I pray that they would hear from me, their earthly father, the word of the Lord as it really is coming through me. So here, dads, this is what, this is what we need to do. As we are with our Father. We ask our Father what word He has for our children. What is the word of the Lord for my nine year old? What is the Lord, word of the Lord for my seven year old? What is the word of the Lord for my 18 year old, my 19 year old, my 21 year old, my 23 year old, my 25 year old Tuesday? What is the word of the Lord for every one of my children? I think I forgot one or two in there, but I'm not sure. What is the word of the Lord? What is the word of the Lord? Let's look at these, at these words. First of all, this idea of the father, and you, you've heard this said before. Well, we're all children of God. Have you heard that? You know, okay, you hear, you hear people saying, you know, you got this person who is in the, in the gutter of their own filthy, sinful life, and they are living and reaping the consequences of that, and, and somebody will look at them and say, well, they're all children of God. I, I will have to beg to differ according to the scripture here, because what... The word of God says about the child. The Greek word is technon. The, the Greek word that is, it's figuratively anyone living in full dependence upon the Heavenly Father. Do we have any people who are living in full dependence upon the Heavenly Father? I want to see your hands right now. I am living in full dependence upon my Heavenly Father. You then are a child of God. Isn't it interesting how life sets us up to be fully dependent? Upon him. Anybody ever lose a job? Okay. Anybody ever have a health issue? Any other, anybody ever feel like quitting? Anybody have hope drain out of your life? Anybody ever feel stuck? Anybody wondering what God's doing? These are all things that keep us looking to Father. You know, it's, what's uh, interesting about, you know, you guys have little kids. A lot of you have little kids. And uh, <clears throat> Saturday, we have these, uh, these two little cats. By the way, I fixed the Serve the City trailer so that the doors close now. We shall not have any more feral cats 
berthing in the Serve the City trailer. It's fixed, okay? Done. That ship has sailed. But here's the thing. Those little kittens have grown into cats, and those little cats jump. And those little cats have claws now. And, I, and I'm, I'm thinking, as I told my wife, we have a couch now that is going to be the sacrificial lamb. If it could bleed, it would. Because every time I'm sitting there reading my Bible, just me and Jesus, and then I hear... I'm knowing that's claws that are climbing the couch and whatnot. But those, those claws actually draw blood when it's on skin, okay? So she put the cat up on my shoulder yesterday, and I'm like, yeah! There's, you know, they just, like, I'm not going to fall. So Hannah was walking somewhere, and the cat took it upon itself to run and take a flying leap and see if it could hang with one claw or one, one paw onto her shoulder, and miss the shoulder part and like just down, you know. So, so what is that to us? My daughter comes running to me and she's a tough little cookie. And she's like, dad, I think I'm bleeding. And I looked and sure enough, she was, she was bleeding. The act of the cat hurt my daughter. But she knew where to go, didn't she? Come to daddy because daddy will fix it. Life, folks, continually gives us opportunities to point to daddy, to run to daddy, to come to him as his child. And he will always speak life to his kids. And we should speak life to our kids. Let's look at these three words encouraging now the 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 greek word here is from a same derivative as the paraclete you might be familiar with the paraclete the holy spirit the holy spirit comes alongside of us and urges us to go forward in an up close and personal anybody ever get up close and personal holy spirit like gets in your face it's the, this is the image like hmm hello some of you are smiling. You know, you know what this is like. If you've gone up to the harbor and watched some of the big cargo containers come in, or maybe you have been in the military and you've watched over the side of ships, how does that huge ship get into the dock? Tugboat. There is one that comes alongside and helps you might I say, pushes you into the place where you need to be. Ever been pushed by the Holy Spirit? Mm, I hate it when that happens. I want to be, you know, I want to be so pliable. Oh, Lord, could I just be, could I just be so pliable in your presence that I don't ever need to get those pushes? I don't know about you, but I am not that good at hearing all the time. And, and... I get those nudges. We'll call them a nudge. Nudge is much nicer than a push, isn't it? It's like, it's that. But the tugboat comes along and eases in and says, all right, here we go. This is where we're going. We're moving into the place where I have for you. The prophetic voice of your voice speaking life to your kids to your grandkids, to your spiritual children. Remember, Paul is using an analogy here. He's not just talking to parents. Matter of fact, he's using this analogy, and he's probably talking less to parents or to fathers than he is about the church bringing people to maturity. It's both and. So he comes alongside, and he pushes us into the place where we need to be. That's encouraging. And now the second word, I already alluded to this a little bit, but this idea of comforting. The comfort of the Holy Spirit is something that I am very, very grateful for. He's comforted me, us, through extreme seasons of loss, even as it re- in regard to the parenting process. 
loss and miscarriages and loss of, it's just been loss and loss and loss. And the comforter comes in and he says, I've got you in the midst. I remember one time we were leaving one of the doctor's offices and we had just had, we just had a miscarriage and, and I was like, I, I, it was the closest that I've ever come to fainting, I guess, I, whatever it was. I, I went down on the floor and, and I was like, I was like, you know, everything's swirling around me. And I'm like, I'm like, oh God, this is like, we had, a, we had announced to the church that we were having a baby and, and it was, it was like, ah, and I remember walking with my wife and walking out to the car and we looked at each other with just this incredible disappointment. We both said, we're disappointed, but we're not without hope. That can only come by the ministry of the Holy Spirit in comfort. He is our comfort. And we must comfort others. That whole suck it up buttercup thing. You know what? That guy that had that on the back of his truck. Don't know if you knew the Lord or not. But I can say this. That for me, I got to get better at that ministry of comfort. You know, regardless of how this works, not everybody gets a trophy just for showing up in life. We have to tell our kids, I'm sorry, but Little League lied to you. Everyone is not a champion. Just ask Thailand, okay? Everyone is not a champion. You don't win 13, or you don't get beat by America 13-0 in the Ladies World Cup and, and come out with a trophy. It doesn't happen. You go home with your tail between your legs. I'm sorry. You need the ministry of the Holy Spirit right now. Here's the thing. If we are going to speak words of life, we must speak words of comfort. Regardless of what the prosperity gospel says, we are not all going to have good days every day. Just not happening. It's not happening. How do we speak life into those situations? Here's a third word. <clears throat> Urging. Urging. We have encouraging, comforting, and urging. This word here means to affirm. In other words, it's a, it's a, a jury term. And you know, when you, when, if you ever served on a jury, you place your hand on the Bible, you know, you say, I, I pledge to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. Or at least they used to. I don't know if they still actually do that. Or you can say, I affirm. If, if you believe that the Bible says you're not supposed to swear on the Bible, okay? It is the absolute, I will tell the truth in this situation, I affirm that my testimony is true. All right, dads. Sometimes the truth, the urging, needs to be tempered with the attitude that you want your kids to move forward. Remember that idea of we're helping them as the tugboat to get to the dock where they can deliver the goods as opposed to I'm going to help you sink this ship that you've already torpedoed and I'm just going to make sure that you experience all of the pain of your bad decisions because that's the truth. I mean, some of you had dads like that. You were never good enough. You couldn't do it no matter how hard you tried. You know, this is a real balance because do we need to urge people to be better? We absolutely do. Do we want to just let them run amok? No, we absolutely don't. But I ask myself this question over and over again. Is my balance for my kids, are they going to come out of this week saying, I did my best and I was a total failure? Or are they going to come out of this week saying, you know, dad walked me through what it was to be the very best son or daughter that I can be. I, I have to watch out because sarcasm is a pretty good spiritual gift 
Oh, wait, wait. It's, it's not one of the... Sarcasm. I tried like three years ago. I tried to give it up at the beginning of the year. My New Year's resolution was to not be sarcastic anymore. It just... Ah, boy. The urging part, I can be so... I can be so stinking sarcastic. Just you can ask my kids. I mean, particularly some of them more than others. But I really hope that they turn out okay because I think I'm messing them up sometimes. Like if you have multiple kids, it's great with eight because I can talk about them and you, you just don't try and figure it out, okay? They might be in this room. But here's the thing. Sometimes... We have nothing good to say. And yet, feel compelled to say something. Anybody ever been there? You're just like, man, I just feel compelled. I must open my mouth now. And then what comes out can be just this unredemptive stench. A few years ago, I had this, you know, I read scriptures like this and I said, there was one particular child and I, I was just having a real hard time. Like there was nothing that I could think of that was, that I could compliment them on. Like, I mean, nothing. Like, oh, you're breathing. Great. That's hoorah. That's wonderful. And I said, God, how do I affirm them in their pigsty experience? Some of you are there now. But this helped me. I'll just tell you. So I would text and I would say, I love you. And I'm praying for you. I can't tell you how many times I sent that text and got no text back. I love you, and I'm praying for you. I love you, and I'm praying for you. I couldn't say, wow, you're just really knocking it out of the park, kid. You're amazing. Like, this is... I had to convince myself, I love you, and I am praying for you. I knew inside I loved this child. And you know the cool thing was? When I got the text back that said... Dad, I I need prayer for this situation, and I know you're praying. Man, you want to talk about God ripping my heart out and saying, all of those prayers, I've heard those prayers, and I'm at work, whether you see it or not. And having the child come and walk into my living room and humbly say, would you forgive me? I don't know what would have happened had I not sent the text saying, I love you and I'm praying for you. It was this urging part of I'm going to affirm you as a human being, the value that you have to God and to me. I'm going to affirm that because the truth of heaven is that God has called you. God has set you apart. God has given you hope. God has given you life. And he's given you something that I didn't give you. And that is his inheritance that's there for the taking. You know, when we adopted our kids, God said, to me, I said, God, I don't know how to be a father. I don't know how to be a parent. But what he said to me, if you adopt these kids, I will give them my inheritance. Because I'm their father. I'm their real dad. And I said, Lord, if you will do that, then I will do whatever it takes in order to bring these children into a place where they can receive your inheritance. This affirmation is witnessing the true testimony. Oh, yes, it's warning of the truth. Gavin and I were talking about wisdom this morning, and and, uh, it it amazes me how things connect in that nine-year-old brain. And I said something about 
wisdom. And he says, oh, yeah, Dad. He said, um, that's when you learn from other people's mistakes, and you don't have to go through those mistakes yourself. Okay, right on. That's the truth. They're catching it. They're getting it. it this, this urging is keeping on going. John Myers isn't here this morning. He's not feeling well. But he said, every time when I see him, he said it to me this week, and he said, keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. You ever need that in your life? Like life is happening, and you feel like the, the, uh, the energy is draining out and whatever this is? Urging, keep on, keeping on. Stating the obvious. Parents, I can't encourage you enough to state the obvious in your kids' lives. When you're speaking life, you're speaking the truth, you call forth those things that are true about your child even when you don't see it. Can I say that again? You call forth those things that are true in their life even when you don't see it in action. And you do it over and over and over again. I remember sitting at, at the kitchen table. We, we had a family dinner every night growing up. And I was, uh, I was 16 years old, uh, maybe 17. And I always sat to my dad's right. And I remember the night when he pushed back his chair after dinner. And he looked at me and he said, I think that you should buy some tools and go in to the body shop business. Now, what precipitated that? My mother had had a car accident and sideswiped the whole side of, I believe it was our 74 Pontiac Catalina, like the biggest car that you could get, had like three inches on either side of the garage when you closed the door, and took the side of it out. And I had the task of fixing this car. And so I, I took it apart, I fixed it. It looked absolutely horrible when I was done. I remember taking it to my grandfather, and I was like, I sprayed it with a Wagner power painter. You remember those things? Meh, meh, meh. You know, it was, it was horrible. It wasn't no, no shine to it at all. And my grandfather looked at it, and he affirmed me in a way that I was like, Grandpa, I, I, I know you're not a liar, but you just bold face lied to me like that does not look that good but my father saw something in me that sparked a business and that's how I paid my way through Bible school it's how we, when we first started out in marriage I, I restored cars and sent them to uh, world-class auto shows as a result of one person, my father, speaking life to me when I didn't even know that I had that within me. I looked at the results of what I did, and I literally cried the first car that I restored for me, and I got it back from the paint shop, and I was like, that was supposed to look good. It looks absolutely horrible. But years later, the fulfillment of what my father spoke. Four years ago, I restored a, a 76 Corvette for my mother and gave it to her for her 70th birthday. And it still sits in the garage at their house where my dad told me, you may not paint in this garage. He had it all fixed up. Within like two weeks, mom crashed the, the car and I was painting in that garage where the Corvette now sits. It's so funny, it's ironic. But had he not spoken those words of life, I would not be where I am today. Parents, spiritual disciples, you have an opportunity to speak prophetically the words of life and to urge and encourage and comfort those who are watching you for that affirmation of the truth in you. Every single one of you have this Opportunity. So here's the question. Will you, how will you speak life today? To whom will you speak life? 
How will you speak it? We should come out of here so encouraged to speak life. Dads, I'm going to speak over you something as we wrap this up. I'm going to speak a prophetic prayer over you. And I want you to receive this. I want you to receive healing. Dads, I encourage you today to not give up. And to ask God to produce fruit from the good seeds that you have planted in your children. I speak grace. I speak mercy over the fallen areas of your life. And we all have them. I speak healing and restoration over the broken and damaged areas of life in general. I pray comfort to the hurting places and hope for the places of regret. Men, life is not over. And light always shatters the darkness. Guys, you've got this. Not because of your grit, but because of your heavenly Father who's speaking life to you. Would you receive the life today? And then would you speak the life? Would you be life bringers in the name of Jesus? Guys, if we do this, ladies, if we do this, we're going to see a revolution of the life of Christ prophetically coming upon the church, coming upon our families, coming upon our nation, because people are going to receive the word of the Lord through you and through me. Scott, I want to thank you for being an example this week of bringing the word of the Lord to some guy you didn't even know. How many of you say, Lord, I want to be used to speak life. I want to see your hands right now. I want to be used to speak life. Father, as you have heard our cry, would you show us the who and the how to speak life over people in our life? What does that look like, Lord? How do we do it? God, as we, your seed, don't fall far from your tree. May we look like you, act like you, smell like you, speak like you, think like you, do like you. All of that, that we be a reflection of that until you come and we spend eternity with you. Maybe this morning... You have something in your heart and in your life where you need to repent of words that you have not been speaking life over. Maybe there's those situations. Maybe it's a child. Maybe it's somebody you're discipling. Maybe it's somebody you see. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a brother or sister. And you say, I have been speaking the the reality, but I've not been speaking the truth of heaven. Maybe you need to just say, God, would you forgive me? Maybe you need to have a conversation with them to say, I've not been speaking life over you. Matter of fact, I've been tearing you down and I ask you to forgive me for that. And by the way, here, let me speak life over you. This is what God sees in your life. Would you just do business with God this morning and ask him for his forgiveness? And that wholeness would come to your spirit, to your heart, and that then it would release the words of life. And sometimes when somebody has been so um, broken or they've done so many things that have been wrong, it's hard for us when they do actually do something, one thing that you could, man, I could affirm that. It's not just I'm praying for you and I love you. It's like, wow, that was really good. It's hard for us to open our mouth because we think, well, that's one thing out of the 500 things that you did wrong. That's one thing that you did right. Could you just start somewhere and find out just because you 
you affirm truth in one area doesn't mean that you're affirming their whole entire messed up life. But there's one thing that you can pick out of that and you can say, you know, that was really, really good. I just realized with the littles, we call them, that I've been just on them. Like, you're not doing this. You're not doing that. Here, this is, it's summer vacation. You have all this time. Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? And I started to realize I was becoming that browbeating dad. So yesterday, I said to them, guys, I just want you to know how amazingly well you did. All day yesterday, and this is why, and I began to just affirm the truth in their life. You know, when they get up this morning, they were just like, Daddy, I'm so glad you're my dad. I'm so glad. And it wasn't like suck suck up, you know. It was like <laughs> everything was, was good. It was all good in the neighborhood. It was good. As we leave today, who and how will you Speak life. Can we just say those two words again? Speak life. Let's say it again. Speak life. One more time. Speak life. Father, we choose to receive your life and we choose to speak life. In the name of Jesus, bless the cookies. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust him so that you will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Speak life. Amen. Have a great Father's Day.